What's going on, y'all? Nick Bro, coming to you with another video. So, <laughs> what's going on, y'all? It's good to see y'all. Um, I didn't usually send out the mass text, so hopefully, let's see who actually stays tuned or tunes in. But I already see Lala, uh, my sister. Bless you, sis. Bless you. Um, I'm not gonna be before you guys too long. Um, you know, I called this video uh, living rent free in Pastor Dow's mind. Sad. Uh, I see my brother Dominion <laughs> restored. Bless you, my brother. I see my brother Timothy. Shalom, shalom. Jennifer Brown. Shalom, shalom. Righteous one. Shalom. Uh, it means a lot, y'all, when I tune in. You know, I see my brother Robert. Shalom, shalom to you. Uh, brother Mitch. Shalom. My brother, you know, we had a beautiful conversation earlier today. Brother Brandon, shalom. Hassel Lamar, salute to you, my brother. Salute. Um, but yeah, you guys, um, if I, if I, as always, you know, if I didn't shout, give you a shout out, it's not personal, but you know, I, I just want like the flow to go on. No name above Yah. That's a beautiful name. Shalom. Shalom to you. Um, but yeah, I did call this video Living Rent Free in Pastor Dow's Mind. And the reason why, I'm naming it such is because no matter how much times I try to show this man love, uh, it's amazing that this this guy just continually tries to attack. And, you know, as of late, I'm sure you guys saw the, the atrocious video that he sent two of his flunkies to make. Um, and they tried to, you know, do their best, I guess, to tear my name down. And I think they did a horrible job. I was actually really debating if I should even make the video because I was like, what is the point? And truth be told, um, there is no point. I'm not going to address it much at all. I'm going to show you just a very few um, seconds of it. And I'm going to show you what's extremely critical. But let's dive into it, y'all, because I don't know if you guys can see this. Um, check this out because you will see very clearly that this right here is Pastor Dow's patron account, right? This is his patron account. And you can see why. I'm Let me show you, actually. All right? So you see this is Pastor Dow's patron account. I do not have a patron, all right? But a saint sent me this. And check this out, right? Do you guys see this right here? Let me see if I could, if I could zoom in just to show you guys something, all right? Do you guys see this? Tools to Titans Part 2. And you can see it for yourselves, right? Do you see where it says uh, yesterday? He made this man did this yesterday, y'all. And it's so sad. The reason why I'm showing you this is because this man is it's like, like I said, I'm living rent-free in this guy's mind. And this dude refuses, you know, he will say things like this, right? And correct, you guys would know. He will say things like, you know, lions don't concern themselves with the opinion of dogs. Well, okay. Um, if I'm just a dog, then why are we still talking about the tools of titans? This was a month ago when I mentioned the pin um, and I mentioned how idolatrous it is. And, you know, if you if <laughs> you know you're not concerned with what I have to say, why are you still talking about it? He literally posted that yesterday. y'all. Let me show you guys one more time so you guys can see what I'm talking about. This man literally posted this stuff yesterday. And let me show you guys um, how. We have to be students. We need to scrutinize everything, all right? Let me actually show you guys something because, again, I do not have access to um, Patreon. But thanks to uh, a loyal supporter, um, this man actually did me a favor, and he, he actually showed me uh, what the Tools to Titan um, account or whatever he document he made. It's a bunch of foolishness is what it is. But let me actually show you guys something because if you guys could see it for yourselves, maybe you will understand what I'm talking about here. So let me see if I could show it real quick. Let me see. stop sharing. Bear with me, y'all. Just bear with me just a, 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 a tad bit. I want to show you guys this thing for yourselves. Maybe I need to share the entire screen so that you guys can see it because I want you guys to actually see it, y'all, for yourselves, all right? You guys can see that? All right. Can you guys see that? Let me go to it. I, I want. I hope you guys can see it. If you guys can see it, please put a one. But you can see from Tools to Titans, um, number two. I right, stick a fork in it. 
<laughs> mythology. It's done. And I guess stick a fork to it. I guess that's to prove that, you know, apparently, you know, they, they showing us something here. But look at what it has to say, y'all. Um, they, they begin to, I'm not going to even read it for you guys because, again, I want you to just see how you can clearly see it is a bunch of bunch of nonsense, right? So you can see right here, do you see this AI? You could clearly see this as an AI-generated um, picture. And look at what, do you see that, y'all? Yeah? Do you see that, you know, quote-unquote menorah? And how, let's count it, y'all. Yeah? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> <laughs> a five candled menorah, but this is supposed to be scholarly work, y'all. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. A five candled menorah. Do, do you guys see why? <laughs> do you guys see why I actually say like I can't take these dudes seriously? They here trying to present something to you as if it's scholarly material, but guess what? Nothing is scholarly about it. So I'm not going to bore you guys. I'm just going to prove how I continually live rent-free in this guy's mind, right? So then the next egregious thing he does is send his two flunkies. He sent his two flunkies. Check this out, right? So you can see it here. Can you guys see that clearly? Right? So you can see that he has brothers. Uh, I'm not even going to mention the name. These two brothers are, are supposedly they're trying to make me look bad by showing receipts. <laughs> okay, so check this out. Check out the receipt that they that um they pulled out because apparently this is so damning. This is supposed to make me look bad, I guess. All right, so let's check this out. Look at what I had to say back then. Pastor asked me to give a testimony of this brother. I'm gonna let him speak for himself. Ooh. I'm gonna let his words speak for himself. Uh oh, that's good. And we're gonna see if this report has changed. We're gonna see who has changed and who has not. All right, so you guys see that? Who has changed and who has not? So this is clearly in reference to my first video, right? Well, my first testimonies video when I said things have changed. So they're going to see who has changed and who has not. Okay, let's see who has changed. Let's watch this video. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mike Israel. Purpose of hospitality. Um, they really give their all. Um, they sacrifice their entire lives just to accommodate what the world would consider strangers you know i could probably if i have to really think about it i don't think i've ever spent more time um with any of the saints more than a week but within the week that i spent with them during the feast days all right, all right so <laughs> did you guys hear that can you i just want to hear if you guys are a listening audience can you guys please put in the chat how long did i spend time with those saints in straightway can you guys please if you guys are a listening audience please how much time did i just say i spent time in straightway can you guys please put it in the comment section down below please it, it's important because again it's all about critical listening they're trying to use this uh testimony of me <laughs> a praise in pastor Dow, but i literally said <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Mitch, no more than a week at a time. <laughs> Lala, a week. Hustle Lamar, a week. E. Clay, a week. Robert, a week. Thank you very much, y'all. I spent no more than a week. No more than a week, y'all. How can you know anything about anybody and in a week? Okay, matter of fact, I'm going to throw myself on the sword because I'm going to show you what spiritual maturity is all right um the, the spiritual maturity um that i'm trying to operate in is notice throughout my videos i have continually said that i got got i got got i fell for the okie doke i i made a mistake i have no shame in it because i'm not dealing in pride all right so let me share this verse with you uh because i think it's going to be important check, check this out Right, so I'm gonna do this quick verse. This is coming by way of Ecclesiasticus, um, six verse seven. All right, can you guys see that? Let me see if I could zoom it up for you guys. All right, Ecclesiasticus six verse seven, and look what it has to say so clearly. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. I'm gonna read that again. 
if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. Would you guys agree that a week is pretty hasty to draw a conclusion of a person's character? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it one more time. Would you guys agree that a week is too hasty, too hasty to come to a conclusion of someone's character? Can you guys please put that in the chat for me? Please, I don't mind being thrown at, you know, throwing myself in the sword, right? Yeah, Dominion, restore a great verse. Yes, <laughs> right? If I knew somebody for only a week, TB, yes, too hasty, <laughs> right? E. Clay, one week, too hasty. Robert, Robert Bradford, too hasty, right? Sis Warty, a week isn't enough time. Yes, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Servants, y'all, bless you. I didn't see the uh, when he came in. No doubt, right? Lala, absolutely, right? And they promote this. They make sure to grab testimonies of people during their first visit. <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys, y'all already know what takes place, y'all. So I gave a testimony after being there for only one week. And that's supposed to... So, look, I was hasty, y'all. Again, that's how you oh, that's how you shame the devil when you're able to um, look in the mirror and show your, your shortcomings. I was a lot younger. And let me actually show you guys even more, give you more context, right? Um, because they're not going to tell you when this video came out. So let me do it for you. This is the original video, all right? Let me see if I can find it for you guys. Um, check this out. Can you guys see this? This is the original video. Let me see if I can zoom it in. Uh, you can still see me here, right? Isn't that the same video? Isn't that what it looked like? This was originally on straight, straightway Clarksville, Northeast. And what do you guys see here? Let me, let me see if I'm showing it properly so you guys can see it for yourself, right? Look at what it says, y'all. Pass it out and straightway truth on blast in New York City, part one. And look at what it says. Five years ago. Let me zoom in even further. Five years ago. <laughs> Five years ago, y'all. So let me let me let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. All right. So when I'm saying that things have changed, yes. Five years ago, I it, it is possible that I probably saw something when I went to Straightway, saw something in Pastor Dow, but now five years later, things have changed. What's the problem with that? What's the problem with that? Especially if you only went there for a week at a time. Come on, people. Let's, let's think. But again, why did I call this living rent-free in Pastor Dow's mind? Because this is what you guys need to understand, y'all. That this man, just like Lala so eloquently said, they, they are so quick to take a testimony video of you when you first come in. And it's not done in a pure nature. No, no, no. They're not doing it because they actually want to see you rejoice. They're using it so that they could use it against you in the future because they know one day you're going to leave. Listen to what I'm saying. They know one day you're going to leave. So they are, oh, let's just get on camera. <laughs> and they think it makes you look bad. No, no, no. Things change, y'all. Things change. I want to ask you guys a sincere question. Isn't it possible for divorce to happen? Even the Bible talks about divorce. Am I right? Isn't it possible for divorce to take place? You see, the way that these people talk, it's like you if you get married, you better never get divorced. That's 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 the way they talk. If you join if you join a job, if you get a job, you better never quit that job or transfer to another job. That's the way they think. It's like they will keep you bound in one particular location for the rest of your days. There's no way for you to change. All of you guys, if you job hopped, and even if you got two, if you got two jobs on your resume, y'all, two jobs, you a sinner. If you got two jobs on your resume, you guys are sinners. That's a, that's their that's their logic. <laughs> that's their logic, y'all. Guys, people get into relationships and come out of it all the damn time, y'all. 
all the damn time. All right. And just this is what I'm trying to get you guys to understand. Again, this man, um, what you're realizing is that this is the first time you see that someone with boldness actually coming against him on a continuous manner. He is used to, because he's a narcissist, he is used to bullying people on the internet. And when people are giving him a taste of his own medicine, what you're seeing, you know, this line that he tries to present himself to be, no, no, he's a scared little pup. That's what he is. He's a scared little pup. You can see it all throughout his videos. And I'm going to show you the videos. I'm, I'm going to show you how he doesn't speak with the boldness and no more. He lost that fire. Yeah, it's a scared little pup. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So let's actually check out another receipt I want to show you guys, right? Because I'm, I'm telling you, these people, I, I live rent-free in their mind and I don't get it. All right? Check this out. I want you to see a video that's very disturbing. So do you guys remember this video I just made a couple of days ago? Right? Um, let me see if I can show you guys. It's This is the video that I made. All right? Let me see if I can zoom it up for you guys. Do you guys remember this video? It was called Pastor Dow. Uh, causes brothers to be homeless when leaving community. Do you guys remember that video I made a couple of days ago? And this is what's so crazy about it, all right? I made it six days ago, according to what this is YouTube is saying, right? And look at what's so crazy. You know, I, I made this post where I'm pretty much telling Pastor Dow all the things he needs to repent for. And if you scroll down, look at this name here. Look at this name here. I was so shocked. I'm not even going to read it out loud for you guys. Can you guys see that name? Can you guys see that name? Can you guys see that name on the top? And look at what this man had to say. He said, y'all mother effers better make sure y'all life is squeaky clean, LOL. Do you guys see that, y'all? Do you guys see that, y'all? Y'all mother effers better make sure y'all life is squeaky clean. Now, all right, you know what? Please, please let me know. Throughout my entire videos, in all my videos, have I ever called any saint a mother effer? Have I ever called Pastor Dowell a mother effer? Like, do you guys see how bad it gets? And I, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Who? Yakal. No scriptures, of course. Th that's very well said. You see, because this is the thing, right? If what I'm saying is so wrong, what happened to the script? What happened to that verse that says, debate that cause with thy neighbor? What happened to that, y'all? If I was so wrong, why not debate your cause? Why not produce scriptures to prove that I'm wrong? But I'm a mother effer because I'm using his own words, y'all. His own words. And then y'all wonder why people call straight away a call. <laughs> you wonder why you call, man, what, what is it? The word of the sword ministry. Not, you gave me life. You gave me life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mrs. Dow coming to defend his, wow. Wow. This, this is crazy, y'all. This is crazy. So this is what they do. They 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 call you outside your name. They curse using explicatives. Explic explicatives, excuse me. I think I'm saying it right. They use foul language to a once former brother. Now you know that brother in particular. Do you guys know? Uh, I'm not gonna mention his name, but do you guys understand that we used to play music together? We broke bread together. We shared intimate, um, you know, stories with one another. Like this was a person that, and I, as a matter of fact, let me go back there again because you're gonna see how I actually respond to the man. You're gonna see how I actually respond to the man. Let me share one more time. Um, let me share one more time, y'all. Do you see that? I'm gonna read it one more time, y'all. Look what it says. Y'all mother efforts better make sure y'all life is squeaky clean. LOL. And I, hey, I respond to the man. Mother effer, question mark. Wow, never would have thought you would call me that. Never called Charles Dow anything remotely like that. Bless you, bro. And I'm still blessing him. Bless you. Bless you. 
Because if that's how you would talk to a former brother, right? You know what's so crazy, y'all? If my sin, according to them, is that I'm telling Pastor Dow to repent. I'm away, y'all. And then they're going to have the nerve. Listen, listen to what I'm telling y'all. They're going to have the nerve. You know, shout out to um, Elder Rob, right? To call people soft. You soft. I think it's pretty soft, y'all. I think it's pretty soft if I'm telling you to repent and you view that as an attack. And you're going to hear in the video, Pastor Dow is going to make mention to people are after a, a pound of flesh. Ain't nobody after you, bro. Ain't nobody after you. We told you to repent and now you're butt hurt. And now you're sending your, 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 your flunkies, your cronies. You know what I'm saying? You send two clowns to admit that I was there for only a week. I mean, this <laughs> oh my goodness. So let's go, let's go to this video um, that Pastor Dow makes. All right. I'm not gonna waste any more time. Matter of fact, before I go there, I want to show you something because I was saying that they call you wonder why we call it a cult. All right. Look, look, look at look at this, y'all. Because I can't make it up. And I left the description in the uh, I left a link, excuse me, in the description down below. I want you guys to check this out, y'all. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. There you go. What is a cult? All right. I want to read it for you guys and tell me what it sounds like. Tell me who does this sound like when I'm reading out these signs, y'all. Yeah. What is a cult? 10 warning signs. All right. A cult. Let me see if I could just expand that real quick. All right. So you guys can see it. All right. Check this out. A cult is an organized group whose purpose is to dominate cult members through psychological manipulation and pressure strategies. Now, do you guys see why I made that video talking about church hierarchy? Do you understand why I made the video regarding church hierarchy? You see, these hierarchies don't exist. And I'm going to say that for another time, but let's keep going, y'all. All right? So the whole design of cults is to manipulate the cult members. Cults are usually headed by a powerful leader who isolates members from the rest of society, a.k.a. you got to leave the cities, come out of her, but it's preaching <laughs> the wrong context, Right? Some individuals who join cults remain lifelong members. Others break free and share how it felt to be brainwashed by a charismatic leader, which is what you're seeing right now. But there are some, there are also, excuse me, some individuals who leave a cult and report that their experience was positive. This is not one of those situations, y'all. This is not one of those situations. <laughs> All right. So let's actually jump down and let's look at the characteristics of a cult, all right? You guys can read the rest of it for yourselves, but let's actually analyze the characteristics. Number one, absolute authoritarianism, right? Authoritarianism, excuse me, without accountability. Without accountability. Do you guys remember clearly at one point in time, this man, Charles Dow said, you know what? I hold myself accountable by the other elders, but now he says, Nobody can hold him accountable except y'all. <laughs> wow, what has changed? I'm the one that changed. All right, yeah, I did change. I did change. Five years is a long time to get to know somebody. It's far better than a week. Let's keep going. Number two, zero tolerance for criticism or questions. <laughs> Doesn't that sound just like Pastor Charles Dow? I shouldn't really call him a pastor. He's not a pastor. He's not, and they're going to take issue for me saying that, but he's really not a pastor, y'all. Do you guys understand? We questioned this man, and because he got butt hurt, this is the reason why we're here where we are? <laughs> so now he, he, he has no choice but to constantly make posts from two of the titans because I live rent-free in his mind. But yet, he, hey, you know how it is. You, uh, you already heard. Number three, lack of meaningful financial disclosure regarding budget. Do you guys know what takes place in straightway? Do you know how the funds are allocated? Because I know, I know what they're going to say. Oh, we distributed to the poor and we distributed to everybody on the community. Okay. 
Okay, so why are there still people without running water? Okay. Why is he building a mansion again? Can you guys explain that part? I may, Maybe I missed it. Yeah. Maybe I missed it. Why is he building a mansion that you need elevators? <laughs> you, you, you need elevators in your mansion? Wow. Okay, let's keep going, y'all. Number, what is it, four? Unreasonable fears about the outside world that often involve evil conspiracies and persecutions. Pers <laughs> right? Evil conspiracies, y'all. You does that doesn't that sound familiar? Oh, the point strikes, point strikes. Oh man, <laughs> get ready for the point strike. You better buy that toilet paper. <laughs> Woo! You better buy the toilet paper. And then when you question him, question him even on that. This is what this man had the nerve to say. Uh, 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 I said to buy toilet paper because I wanted you guys to buy canned goods. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> man, I, I, you can't make this shit up. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. All right, let's keep going. All right, five, a belief that former followers, this is the key, y'all. This is where this is where that man that left that that comment on my on my on my video. This is where he comes in. A belief that former followers are always wrong for leaving, and there is never a legitimate reason for anyone else to leave. Hence, why they can call you a mother effer. Mother effer. Wow, I would have never thought, y'all. Real talk. I really would have never thought he would call me that. Never. After all the love I try to show this man. And all the love that he showed me in times past. And for us, now you calling the brethren a mother effer? Wow, you guys. Would have never thought. Would have never thought. All right. Six, abuse of members. Why are so many people? Do you guys know any place, any job, any type of, you know, uh, assembly, even in Christianity? Do you hear the members that leave constantly complain? Why straightway? Oh, because they're the one that's wrong. Yeah, that's right. That That's his logic. Everybody that leaves, they're the ones that's wrong. It's not nothing that he did. There's nothing that he did. I mean, if you guys are, listen to what I'm telling you. All right, let's, let's ask if this is abuse, right? Let's ask if this is abuse. Could you imagine uh, you working almost 40 to 60 hours at your day job, right? Listen to what I'm saying carefully because <laughs> this is an actual account. You're working 40 to 60 hours at your day job and then you're expected to come back to the land, on the communities, and work probably another good 20 to 40 hours. Would you classify that as abuse? And now that set this individual that I'm talking about, now that they're in their 50s, is literally damn near limping around. And can't even work. Is that not abuse? All right, let's keep going. Records, books, articles, or programs documenting the abuses of the leader or group. Haven't we heard about a leader in straightway, y'all? That's uh, that's currently on the news media abusing people, right? Have we not forgotten about Bryson? And, and let me address this while I'm here, right? Uh, uh, I heard Daniel Mir. Uh, I I don't watch lines then. I had to hear from a loyal source that Daniel Mir said, hey, Nick, next time I see you, I want to see you eat with a fork. Well, uh, da Daniel, let me, let me, matter of fact, let me, let me, I hope you see me. All right. Daniel, next time I see you, I better not see you with a fork. Matter of fact, you should be banned from using forks or any utensil for an entire year. How about you lose that weight? How about that? How about that? Okay. Since we're talking about, I want to see you with a fork. Because it's so funny. Ha ha. Don't eat with a fork. <laughs> Don't eat with a damn thing. Go on a fast. Go on a fast, y'all. Anyway, come on. Let's read this. Followers feeling they are never able to be good enough. Don't you, don't you guys see how this man constantly berates the people, calling the men dum-dums in front of their wives? Man, I just I heard I, I could I never lived on the land. I, I never want to lie, but I've heard of the atrocities that take place in those dining hall preachers. 
if somebody was ever in those dining hall preachers, can y'all please verify how how oppressive it was? If anybody was ever in those dining hall preachers, can anybody please verify how oppressive it was? How he he would always try to make the members, even on the land, feel like they ain't no good. They just pieces of shit. Can you guys please verify? You know, because I don't like to lie. Let's keep going. Nine, a belief that the leader is right all the time. Pastor Rufus is notorious for saying this. <laughs> Look at that. Just, uh, let, me, let me tackle this. <laughs> Sister Jordan, Yarden, right? <laughs> Look at that. Preaching, dining hall preaching is oppressive. This is a sister that was living on the land, y'all. Oppressive. You know what I'm saying? Now, Pastor Rufus, um, he would actually say this all the time, y'all. Have you ever seen this man, Pastor Dow, repent? Have you ever seen this man repent? Ever. All right, come on. Let's go. So now, ne next one, last one. A belief that the leader is the exclusive means of knowing truth or giving validation. Man, ain't that, that's a big one, y'all. That's a big one. I mean, this dude, he, he, he all, look, he always says in almost every single YouTube video. I'm going to talk about um, political, social, economic, uh, world, whatever. You, you, he runs down the list. And guess what, y'all? He, he thinks he's the, the epitome of knowledge. Like he's the only person that has truth in this world. He doesn't, y'all. He doesn't. He, he doesn't, y'all. He's, he, he's full of shit. He's full of shit. So let's actually go into this um, video that Pastor Dow did. Um, I believe he put it out yesterday. And I just want to point out something because, again, when you hear this man, they, they have the nerve to think that you are attacking him or because you loving him enough to point out that the things he's saying is just not so. It's just not so. All right, so let's check this out together, y'all. Fair use, by the way. Fair use, fair use. Come on. Well, all right. Good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube, Pastor Dow here. I notice that there is a trend going on out there in, in, in the, the world, especially concerning Pastor Dow. And you know what that trend is? That trend is I have a lot of people putting a lot of words in my mouth. Let's just deal with this one right here. Instead of them saying. Let me, let me address that. He, he's saying that people put words in his mouth. Yeah, let me let me address this, y'all, because th that it's that's so disingenuous. If I show you a newsletter that was created by this man, I didn't create the newsletter. Y'all didn't create the newsletter. It says by Charles Dow Jr. If I present that newsletter, is that me putting words in his mouth? Or is that his own words, his own writings? Which one is that? If we're showing videos like this, right? Videos like this. If we show videos just like this, where we letting the man speak, are we putting words in his mouth? Or he's actually saying it, y'all? <laughs> oh, boy. But let's, let's hear it, because I think pa uh, Pastor Rufus said, now nah, he's a victim. Yeah, that, that's that's exactly what it is. What Pastor Dow says is, is what the scripture says. And here is the scripture, and here is what the scripture says. So, you guys, let, let, to be fair, when he quotes certain things, yeah, they are from the scriptures. We have no issue with you quoting things from the scripture. What we have an issue with is you simply not interpreting the scriptures in proper context. That's the issue that we have. Not that you quote in scripture. <laughs> but you see how you move the goalpost? Let's go. Or what Pastor Dow says is, is he's actually quoting what Jesus says, or Moses says, or the prophets says. No, nah, that's not what they're doing today. What they're doing, because some people are so offended with Yah's word. They're looking for that pound of flesh to take it out on him, just kind of like the sand heater in the old. You see, you see what I, you see, I wasn't lying, y'all. You see what he just said right there? 
They're looking for their pound of flesh. Ain't nobody trying to attack you. Ain't nobody trying to attack you. We literally telling you to repent. And this dude is so soft. His ego is so fragile. He can't take it. So now he said they they looking for a pound of flesh. What blood is being drawn? What blood is being drawn, y'all? Because we using your own words against you? So now you're leaking blood? That's a pound of flesh? Mercy, mercy, mercy. Let's go. They are saying Pastor Dow says, and they're excluding what Jesus says. Give an example. Who made this statement right here? I want you all to answer if you know what the Bible says. Unless a man forsake all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Who made that statement? Now, I often quote that statement, but that's not what happened today. The people are getting angry. All right, you guys, let me let me address that, yeah. All right. Unless a man forsake of all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Um, Please pay attention to that because, you see, this is the thing, right? When you say a blanket statement like that, what I want to ask you guys is, you know, be scholars here, right? And I, and I mean that in the most respectful way possible, all right? Forsaken all, what does that mean truly? What does that mean truly, all right? Let's please, let's keep, remember that question, because we're going to dive deeper. But, you know, there's this idea, there's this notion that you got to forsake all. But I personally, it, like, it doesn't, it doesn't add up in scripture. And we're going we're gonna to see it. We're going to see it. Uh, let this video play out, y'all. Yeah. I'm upset because I continually quote that statement. And they are, are levying anger and malice and ill will and attacks towards me because I repeat what Jesus says. Does that not sound like some of the same things that the prophets in that day um, constantly uh, had the people at odds with them because they constantly kept saying what Yah says or the apostles constantly kept saying what Jesus says and people, they're pretty upset at that. They're pretty upset with that. I mean, let's see, let's see who said this right here. And all that believe were together and no man had nothing he called his own. Who said that? All right, you guys, I, I want you to follow me here. All right, I want you to follow me here. And shout out to Prince of Power. If Prince of Power is watching this, if you guys get a chance, please, please, yeah, uh, you know, follow this man because this man is very intelligent. Um, and I like the way he rightly divides the word, right? But he actually made a very good point when he was addressing this video. So I want you guys to follow me here, right? Could you imagine we have two passages of scripture, one stating that you need to forsake all. And then you have another um, passage of scripture where they said they have all things common. But how does that harmonize? How can we justify the two statements? If you have given up all, what is there for you to even have in common? Am I making sense here? Oh, no. Answer the question. Honestly, y'all, if I gave up my house, I gave it up. If this house, I gave it up. So I no longer have it. Who, what's there to have in common? Who can partake within this house? Who can I share that, this house with if I forsook it? You know what I'm saying? Who, who can I, if, if I've given up all the things that I have, if I forsook all, how does that harmonize with this passage of scripture where it says that we have all things in common? Am I making sense, y'all? Does it even line? Does it add up? Does it harmonize? Let's keep going. Hmm. I want y'all to tell me who said that. Again, because it's being charged that these statements originated with Pastor Dow. And no one ever said that. That's the thing. He's moving the goalposts, y'all. No one has ever said that those words originate with Pastor Dow. <laughs> he just created anything up now, y'all. Did they originate with me? Or am I quoting what the Messiah and the Apostle says? 
who says this? When you're in Babylon, build ye houses, plant you gardens, or plant you gardens, build you houses, and dwell in them. Who told you that when you're in captivity, when you're in Babylon, to build houses? <laughs> you guys see what's going on here? So he's talking about Jeremiah 29. That's his hallmark verse, by the way, when it comes to community living. And you guys got to understand, right? How can you give all and then build houses? Doesn't that defeat the purpose? How can you balance the two? How does those two verses harmonize, y'all? How can you forsake all but now you also have all? I think Lala said that. Didn't she say that somewhere? I, I, forgot, I thought I saw someone put that in there. How can you give how can you give all and end up with all? You're gonna end up with a house, you're gonna end up with the gardens, you're gonna end up with all the women. How did how is that how is that possible? Let's be let's be some scholars here, y'all. Let's 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 stop real quick. I want to actually let's be some scholars and let's actually break this word together, y'all. Let's go. Uh, let me see if I can show it to y'all. All right, share my screen. Uh, let's let's open this up together. All right, we're gonna go to Jeremiah, and let me show it to y'all, just so that you guys can read it for yourself. Let's go to Jeremiah twenty nine. All right. Uh, let's go to the KJV. You know. I'm I'm just weird that way. I love my KJV. Um, but let's go there. And all right, so you guys can see it for yourselves, right? And I hope it's coming in clear. All right. So check this out, right? Let's check this out. Now, these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem onto the residue of their elders, which were carried away captives, and to the priests, and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. And here's another thing too, right? If we're reading this in context, wouldn't that mean that this is a particular dispensation of time? Wouldn't this passage of scripture, I know what, you know, what Hebrews tried to do. Hebrews try to, you know, take a passage of scripture and they try to say, oh, you know, it's, it's prophecy is in, two, in dual, dual form, right? It happened at this point in time, but it's also going to happen again. I, I'm not too sure about that, y'all. I'm just not too sure about that. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it happened at that particular point in time. But even if we were to use this passage of scripture, let's see if this passage of scripture still justifies what this man has to say. All right. So if I jump down to verse four, because this is where he starts off. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Build ye houses and dwell in them. But I thought he said forsake all. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. <laughs> take ye wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons. And give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. But check this out. In context, y'all. In context, y'all. Look at what verse 7 has to say. And seek the peace of the city, what I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto Yahweh for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Did this man ever tell you that? This, this, does this man ever tell you to pray for the city or does he say, come out of her? You see, again, the issue is not with Pastor Dowell quoting passages of scripture. The problem is Pastor Dowell's interpretation of said scriptures because they do not harmonize with the rest of the book. There's a bunch of contradictions in his own teachings, y'all. Uh, in his own teachings. And I'm going to go even further. Let's go even further, y'all. <laughs> Verse 8. For thus saith Yah of hosts, the Yah of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you. Not a hearken to your dreams, which ye have caused to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith Yahweh. 
That's right. Yah has not sent Pastor Dao, y'all. I want y'all to understand that. If this man is telling you, you got to leave the city, when Yah himself, did now, did I write that or did Yah write that? Yah inspired the prophet Jeremiah to write that. Pray for the city. So which one is it? Do we got to leave the city? Do we got to leave the city? Flee from the city? Come out of her? Or did he just simply say, pray for the city? Again, y'all, proper context. I mean, because after all, I'm one, to, I'm one to actually say that I believe it's for a particular dispensation of time. I actually think this is for a particular dispensation of time. But according to Pastor Dow, he wants to quote it. <laughs> you, you, he wants to quote it. So let's see, y'all. Let's see. All right, verse 10. For thus saith Yahweh, that after 70 years, oh, what's going on here? After 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Do you guys see that? So in context, listen to what I'm saying, y'all. In context, is not Yahweh at that particular point in time saying that this captivity was going to last 70 years? But we are going to read that passage of scripture and think that it pertains to us now. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> let, let's be real, y'all. Yeah. Let's be real. So let, let, let's see what this man has to say. Uh, let's see what he had to say. Uh, let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. Pastor Dow quotes all this, but I'm the one that's being shot at as the originator of these statements. Now, I stand by these statements. 100% I do because right. they come directly from the book. I they do come from the book, but you're not interpreting the book, <laughs> not in proper context. I believe the prophets, I believe Jesus, I believe the apostles. You have to listen with a critical ear because a lot of times when people are upset about something and they really get mad and upset, they love twisting and they love distorting and mixing words. They love that stuff because they get mad at someone, especially someone who believes that book enough to live it. And All right, matter of fact, this is a beautiful, I, let, let's put this on, let's put this here. You guys see that? Context of Jeremiah 3.15 is not for this time either. Heard that a thousand times. Man, 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 you, you, you stole the words out of my mouth. <laughs> let's go to that one, y'all. Let's go to that one, y'all. All right, let's go to that one, y'all. Great job, brother Brandon. Let's go to that one, y'all. Let me see. Can you guys see this? Let's go to that one. All right, let's read that in proper context. All right, let's go back. Jeremiah 3.15. You see, again, the, the problem is not um, with Pastor Dow quoting the word. The problem is, is this man interpreting the word in proper context. Let's go. Jeremiah 3, right? You guys can see it. King J KJV, Jeremiah 3. Let's read it in context, y'all. All right, let's read it in context. All right. All right, let's, let's read it, y'all. Let's start from 14. You know how Pastor always says it, Pastor Dow. Read a little bit before. Read a, read, read a little bit after. Okay. So what happens before in verse 14? Turn, O backsliding children, safe y'all. For I am married unto you. We could really stop right there. We could really stop right there. If anybody knows about this dispensation of time that we're in, are we yet married to Christ? Has Have we entered the, the, the marriage chamber? According to the parables that Jesus himself have made, are we yet married to him? Or is the marriage going to come Later on. Okay. Let's keep going, y'all. Let's keep going. Again, let's read it in proper context. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. To Zion. Let's stop right there, y'all. Let's answer that one. 
Are we in Zion? Are we in Zion? These are humble questions I have. These are sincere questions I have. Are we in Zion? Do you, you see that? He will never read for, verse 14 for y'all. And let me let me show you guys something too, right? Something that's interesting about sentence syntax. Do you see behind that word Zion? Can you guys see behind that word Zion, y'all? You know what that's called? You know what that's called? That's called a colon, meaning that the thought process of this verse has not yet finished. Listen to what I just said. If you saw a colon behind the word Zion in verse 14, that means the thought process of verse 14 has not yet finished. So verse 14, and when we move on to verse 15, they are locked up with one another. Locked up, y'all. So let's read 15. Let's read 15, y'all. All right. And I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So hold on. When will this take place? When will Yah give you pastors according to his heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding? Oh, that's right. When he brings you back into Zion. Oh, oh, okay. 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 But no, they're going to take issue with me because I actually chose to read the book. In proper context, y'all. Again, the, the issue with Pastor Dowell, let me let me put him back on the screen so you guys can see this plan for yourself. All right. The, the, the problem with Pastor Dowell is not uh is not that he is quoting the word. As a matter of fact, I, I would love for all people who is wielding the book to actually quote the word. That's not the issue, y'all. The issue comes when this man chooses to interpret the word in such a way with, to, to, with in such a way to manipulate, coerce the members underneath him. That's when the issue arises. That's when the issue arises. Not because you're quoting the word. Don't move the goalpost and say that we after a pound of flesh because you're quoting the word. No, no. No, we using your own. Here's the thing that y'all. This is, we gotta let's stop. Let's cut off the game. Let's cut the game. Let's cut the crap. All right. Uh pass it out. You see, this is what you need to do. You need to actually acknowledge what you have said in your newsletter. Just like I told you. You need to acknowledge what you have said uh in all your sermons where you're calling yourself the man of Yah. When you call yourself a G Jeremiah 3:15. How does it make sense to forsake all just to get it right back? Didn't Jesus himself, listen to what I'm telling y'all. Didn't Jesus himself say, uh, you know, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to lay his head? So if we're trying to be like Christ, then what's all the mansions? What's the mansion for? The Mercedes. I mean, Christ had nothing, y'all. Yeah? But this man wants to make you believe that you got to give him all your money. And you know what's so crazy, y'all? Who's the one that's given all? I know he's going to give you some story from yesteryear that nobody could verify. And he's going to say, oh, he gave up all. Okay. And you know, even if that is true. This goes right back to what I'm saying, y'all. Things have changed. Because the humble Pastor Dow, and that might be giving him too much credit, if I got to be honest. But the humble Pastor Dow that I thought I knew those five years ago when they those cronies try to, you know, make it seem like I was praising Pastor Dow back then, right, for knowing him after only a week. <laughs> uh, that Pastor Dow was humble. I didn't see the mansion. I didn't see the fancy cars. But the pass it out today, it is drastically different, y'all. That's just keeping it a buck. I'm just keeping it a buck. And I'm not his enemy because I'm telling this man to repent. I didn't, listen, to, listen to what I'm telling y'all. I didn't call him outside his name. I didn't attack the man physically. I didn't talk about his wives. 
I didn't say anything even remotely about the brethren to the to the extent where I called them my mother effer. I didn't do none of that. I told the man to repent. And that's what makes us his enemy. That's the reason why we live rent free in his mind. Those guys, do you guys understand? They wasted a whole two hours. Those two guys over there in Clarksville, they wasted two hours. Two hours of the saints' time, of your time, talking about they're going to show receipts, and all they did was boast about what they claim they're doing for the saints. If you, if any of you guys saw that, were you guys edified by that video? Please put it in the chat. With, all, with the multitude of verses, with the multitude of verses that those two dropped in that two-hour live feed, that circus, did any of you guys feel edified? And, and you know, here's the thing, right? People are probably wondering why it took me so long to respond. It took me long to respond because they were not worth my time. They were not. And I'm not saying, <coughs> excuse me, I'm not saying that, uh, yeah, we are in, not edified by their video. <laughs> Straight up. Straight up. Yeah, right. Hot garbage. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Hot garbage. Uh, man, was it moved enough to watch? <laughs> hey, you're, you're better than me. I, I, I was here, man, as y'all is my witness, y'all. I was watching this video, actually, like, man, I wonder, I wonder what they got on me. Damn, what did I do? What do? And I, the whole time, every second that went by, I, I went from looking excited to... <laughs> I wish I turned it off. I wish I turned it off, y'all. <laughs> he claimed I, I couldn't take it. <laughs> it was just a bunch of rambling, y'all. <laughs> just a bunch of rambling. Yeah, I really felt bad for the brothers. I really felt bad because again, you know what, you know what's taking place? This is this is seriously what's taking place. Because of the excessive man worship and idolatry, uh, whenever they see people come out against Pastor Dow, it's literally in their mind, it's as if we are shattering this molten calf that they have erected in honor to Pastor Dow. And because we're shattering that idol within their minds, you see, this is how you know you're affecting them. This is how you know you're affecting them. As much as they want to say, you know, lions are not concerned with the opinion of dogs, then why you wasted two whole hours trying to talk about me? Mind you, I'm not the only person that left Clarksville, y'all. You, you guys do know, I, I left over a year and a half ago. Over a year and a half ago. They never came out with this video. And now you got Mario has left. Marcus has left. <laughs> and they wasted the whole two hours on Brother Nick. <laughs> Again, y'all, living rent-free and past the dollar's mind. And it's sad. It's sad. All this dude has to do. <laughs> AB22. He can't sleep. Worried about you, brother Nick, and Pastor Rufus. <laughs> hey, that's what it is. And it's sad. It's sad. All this dude has to do is repent. And you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna beat the dead horse. Um, I didn't want to be before you guys too long. I will say this though, you guys, uh, please stay tuned because there is gonna be uh a live video that I do, a live show I do, is going to be fifth day. So that's Thursday evening. Now, the time is yet to be um, announced, but please stay tuned. because It's going to be the first time I do a panel. Um, it's going to have several brothers outside of myself, um, men older than myself, with a lot of wisdom. I don't want to ruin it for you guys yet. All right, I don't want to ruin it for you guys. But please stay tuned because what we're going to do is going to break down that question I had asked in a previous video concerning church hierarchy. All right, we're going to discuss it. We not only are we going to break it down in a scholarly fashion, but what we're going to do is actually bring words or, or, or text in its proper context. 
and we're going to show you how leaders, leaders throughout the angles of time, because of this end time spirit, have influenced the body of Christ and have oppressed the lay members. All right. So it's going to be a panel all right, of multiple people. So you're not going to just hear me. Many extinguished um, individuals are going to be out there to give their viewpoint on this topic of church hierarchy. All right. So it's again, it's going to be fifth day or, you know, Thursday evening. All right. Um, please, you guys stay tuned for that. All right? I'm, I am excited for that because my hope, honestly, is that I've done given enough context concerning the, uh, what's the word, the idolatry, the man worship, the pride, the arrogancy, the haughtiness. I've done given enough proof and evidence concerning this matter. So what I plan to do is, in, in the my hope is that through making this video, it will be a proverbial nail in the coffin where I can literally leave it all out on the line. And for those who have the ears to hear, they're going to hear but I'm going to move on because I'm going to tell you right now, y'all. I'm going to be real honest with you. Um, I don't do this for entertainment and drama. All right? I don't. I know it may seem entertaining. I'm not going to lie. It may seem entertaining um, when you see, you know, maybe Pastor Rufus or myself or Brother Ryan Worship Podcast or whoever, right, exposing certain truth. Um, it may seem exciting at the moment. But, again, I'm not doing it for the slander, the gossip. And, the, you know what I mean? That's not what I'm about. That's not what I'm about whatsoever. What I am about is simply bringing forth truth. And that's why for me personally, I'm led in the spirit. I, and I hope I can keep my word that after that video, I'm a, it's going to be so ex explicit and so clear that I won't have to touch this topic anymore. And if they want to keep, you know, if they want me to live in their mind rent free, that's on them. That's on them. But I'm going to move on with the actual message of the kingdom um, so that people could be set free. Bless you, my brother. Bless you, worship. Bless you, Shalom, Nadia. Bless you. Uh, um, but yeah, that's 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 my hope. All right, you guys. But again, I really appreciate all of you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you, family. And once again, y'all, I know that they may come out of character and they might call me mother effer, uh, whatever the case may be. But I I would never want to stoop so low to call my brothers, and I still regard them as my brothers. You know, because as Pastor Rufus has said many times, don't close your bowels of compassion. So that's what I live by, right? So I never want to demean them. Uh, my hope is simply that they actually do repent. They actually do repent. And the repentance is far beyond just Pastor Dow at this point. The members under Pastor Dow, because like the verse says, right? If a ruler hearkens unto lies, the servants are wicked. You guys are getting me. Oh, you guys, sorry about that. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I don't know if you guys can see see me. Uh, if you guys can still hear me, please put a one. I'm going to just change the camera real quick. Uh, can you guys see, see me? I, I, sorry about that. I'm, I got to use my camera just spazzed out on me. So it is what it is. But I'm on my way out anyway. But again, you guys, uh, you know, please pray for these individuals. Please pray for them because um, it's getting to a point where the repentance is not solely on Pastor Dow. You know, he's a ruler that has talking on to lies, but the servants under are therefore wicked. And in their wickedness, they too need to repent for their man worship, for putting a man before Christ. They got to. They got to. They have to repent as well. All right, you guys. So with that being said, love you guys all dearly. Um, and with that being said, Nick over and out. And message sent. Jesus is king, y'all.